Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. Princess Catherine has compounded people's confusion and sense of loss after revealing her battle with cancer last week. It is not the announcement, their moves attract. Both are seen piloning their hypocrisy, and more of their hypocrisy, in front of Princess of Wales cancer. In this video we about to update. Well the Duke and Duchess of Hypocrisy issued a joint statement wishing Catherine and her family health and strength after the news broke last Friday. Though they were once so incredibly tight-knit, Harry is also no longer in contact with his brother Prince William or sister-in-law Catherine, as tensions finally bubbled over following Harry and Meghan's explosive claims. Fellow ITV royal expert Chris Ship said Thursday that Harry did reach out to William, along with Meghan, when they learned about Catherine's COVID-19 diagnosis amid the ongoing royal fallout. This, of course, means that as soon as this message came out, that the internet critics all responded with their instant outrage and hypocrisy hypocrisy accusations, which, of course, were scathing. There are people who are now insinuating that Meghan and Harry were in no position to show compassion of any kind, having previously criticized the faces of the Prince and Princess of Wales. Which is leading some people to suggest Meghan and Harry had no business offering their condolences, that as if other previous barbs from Harry and Meghan in the faces of the Prince and Princess of Wales are anything to go by. And I gotta say, I agree. Or maybe Harry has a tinge of regret I came to school with Harry and once upon a time Harry and Catherine were extremely close, and I'm sure he remembers that. But Meghan feeling guilt, come on. She was the one that once remarked that said they were only a plane crash away from the throne or something like that. So feeling guilty, no. Meghan never feels guilty about anything. At least that would make them sound sincere oh, even better let them come out and apologize for the lies they have told in an attempt to destroy he reputation of the Prince and Princess of Wales, in which case then I might think they are being sincere and I might actually think that they do feel guilty. Otherwise, nothing they say will convince me of anything. Besides, the Princess of Wales, bless her, has enough to worry about without adding Harry and Meghan to the mix at this late date. She has loving people who take care of her. They are there to be there for her, to tend to her. Her enemies can wait. I mean nothing is dumber than expressing some kind of guilt, and it's well past time for that. And as Harry's claim to still being in love with his family shows, their actions suggest otherwise. Harry has exploited, he has terrorized, and he has broken the hearts of those he pretends to love. So we can't act like they give a shit about us. Meghan totally ignored her sick father now, so I'm guessing that Bond is everything it was made out to be, and then some. Which takes me back to those supposed well wishes issued to royal family members and how he must feel just being completely erased. He doesn't count anymore. He's not considered. Which is why I would imagine that Meghan angry that yes, indeed, Catherine still in some ways has the limelight. How does she have the nerve to regret that? Meghan is incapable of genuinely feeling sorry for anyone else. She is not sorry for anything that she has done so I don't believe this. I mean, they can never be wrong, right? Therefore, they have no sympathy. The only thing I'm certain they will be a little nervous about is that they have been knocked off the front pages of the papers before they were making headlines again? That's their only concern. They say all things are possible. Perhaps Megan will spin some tall tale about the invention of an invented health issue of one of the invisible kids to squeeze herself back into the public eye. I would like to think she would never go so low, but honestly, I would not put it past her. That was when she used the excuse a child was sick when Harry was attending an awards night and she couldn't go. Yeah, right. I wish Harry and Meghan had some remorse, I doubt they do, their treatment of King Charles and the Princess of Wales must have caused them a lot of distress, agony, and stress, which would take a toll on their well-being. Meghan, the narcissist, with no empathy, has a hole in her. The young child in me screams for this fake news to stop, and frankly, I find it hard to believe anyone is buying into it. 
Meghan should also be kept at an arm's length from Princess Catherine and Harry, neither should be given any forgiveness. Different from Meghan, who has no conscience to feel remorse. When they possessed any fugitive echo of regret, it probably came from the simple fact that they felt guilty about giving Catherine half the stress that resulted in her sickness. How they are treating her and the royals is disgusting. Moreover, how can we possibly believe that this duplicitous actress has anything but duplicitous feelings towards Catherine? Gone are the days, too many days in the past for me to trust her now. Namely, it has come to light that Harry and Meghan actively sabotaged their work with William and Catherine while they still co-ran the Royal Foundation, exposing a blatant lack of honesty and integrity. It is also worth remembering that Meghan's personal secretary, Jason Knopf, had expressed concerns, which led to an investigation by Sir Edward Young at the request of the Queen. After receiving the investigation report, which also identified cases of misappropriation, the Queen swiftly ousted them from the Royal Foundation, placing them under supervision. What happened next convinced the Queen that, full-time or part-time, Harry and Meghan had not and never would display the dignity required to brand the monarchy as their own. As a result, they had to leave. This decision was made during the Sandringham Summit which took place in consultation with William and Charles. And Harry signed a binding legal agreement to that effect in which he gave up his right to use his royal highness title and stripped himself and his family of any further privileges. Harry has been given 12 months to change his mind, but he directed for the arrangements to be finalized. She did, so it is legally obligatory and final. This is like the abdication instrument of 1936, which had gotten us out of Edward VIII with his pants on. With the benefit of hindsight, perhaps they should not have been allowed to get away with it, as the Queen's hush type has clearly advanced a false narrative that Harry and Meghan think still works, or an allusion to conservative infantry of Ruritanian soldiers from the Gothic romance novels of 19th-century English writer Anthony Hope. Nevertheless, the facts have been for the most part reported correctly, and for Meghan to have made no complaint to either writer would seem to speak volumes. If there is smoke, there is fire and people's lives were destroyed in serving this supposed cause Harry must face consequences as well if any of this is true, as he is just as guilty given his connection with his family. LC there is little chance either of them will reside in regret, a feeling they both seem temperamentally incapable of. Meghan, I imagine, is probably feeling quite furious at the health statement and the subsequent global praise. This has most likely made her commerce conflict take a back seat as well as she is probably pissed off. On the other hand, Meghan and Harry, who the hell gives a damn if they are annoyed? To me they simply seem like dishonest pretenders. Certainly we would be able to do without them if it came to that. I am more convinced that everything they do is for their own personal gain. When you see media stories showing remorse for what they did, it is just a cheap act to play along with the ride and get sympathy from the crowd. Those answers are disingenuous to us because we know so much about them. I'm sure Megan is worried about all the focus on Catherine. It's going to outdo everything Megan ever does. They act like such babies. But I do not believe that they actually feel regret, except maybe recognize the extent of how fallen they are. They have crossed too many lines that can never be uncrossed. At times, you simply have no choice. And, this behavior is far more than your ordinary sibling squabble. She is constantly cutting off herself right and left and nothing can be done about it, so the injustice and disrespect Meghan and Harry cause, especially to Harry's family. It honestly feels like a damn whirlwind of stuff has happened. There can be no doubt, as I am sure the line they crossed is one that cannot be recrossed. They crossed the line, and no one who supports basic freedoms should want them back. I guess the king should have considered Harry to be his son with whom he would relax, but it is hard to imagine other royal family members who would willingly subject themselves to the kind of negativity that accompanies Harry and Meghan. Harry and Meghan seem to be incapable of actually being sorry, or doing better, or caring for anyone else. The result can be perceived as egoistic and considerate only to themselves, with their own interests above everything. 
One could wonder if Meghan would have this forgiveness if the royal family allowed the world to paint her as a megalomaniac monster, time and time again, like so many examples before. It is impossible to imagine what the past year has been like physically and mentally for the Duchess of Sussex. Although Harry has regularly spoken about his own mental health issues, did they ever pause to think about the consequences for the royal family? Harry and Meghan would probably be wise to keep their distance from this. Instead of her ladiness, it should be all about fixing what has long been less than dignified within the royal family. If there is no money to be had, it is doubtful that they will actually feel guilty in any way. The way they have treated the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge has been shocking, and you are left assuming they will be looking forward to the next attention-seeking stunt for one man and his dog. Just take a look at the train wreck they have created and the royal family are yet to utter a word. They so need to come forward at this point and tell the truth so that others can stop telling the lies. But that is hardly likely to happen. The best approach for the royal family now is to stay away, avoid making any statements to the press, and keep off social media. However, the royal family is just tired of explaining themselves, it appears. Harry and Meghan may commiserate with King Charles and Catherine over such travails, but the case of Meghan's father is anodyne. He's close by and sick, would love for you to come around. The chance to get to know Harry and his unseen grandchildren would mean the world to him. If they really want to be compassionate and understanding to one another, why can't they do the same with him? But Meghan, it seems, cannot grow. If she was, she would have made peace with her father the upcoming storyline is about Meghan trying to prop up her new brand. Her willpower is strong and she will achieve her goals. What reason do they have to want to be close to him when he has managed to bring so much anguish into their lives, to his own family? The King and Princess of Wales are doing their best to recover, and probably the last thing they need is Harry, seen as a nefarious traitor, mired in their own business. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.